Larry Engelsano reporting for AbWeb. It's a busy week here in Connecticut. The American squadron of C-47s are about to depart from Waterbury Oxford Airport here in Connecticut to take part in the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And an event like this isn't easy to pull off. Mo's going to tell us why. All right, my name is uh, Morena Guiari. Uh, my nickname is Mo. Everyone knows me as Mo. I'm the director of marketing and media for the D-Day squadron. And uh, where did uh, the D-Day squadron start? Well, it started five years ago. Uh, in 2014, uh, Placid Lassie, uh, the leading aircraft of uh, this year mission, went to Normandy to celebrate the 70th anniversary of uh, D-Day. So around the table, having a beer with some local uh, uh, folks, they decided, you know what, in five years, we got to do this and we got to do it bigger. It's gonna be the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, probably a lot of veterans won't be around after the 75th they're already pushing for a high 90s so why don't we do something uh, epic in 2019 so about a year and so that's essentially was decided to do it but the planning really for uh, the 2019 uh, flight uh, started about two years ago and an organization called DAX over Normandy over in Europe led by Peter Brown and Andrew Dixon uh, again decided to make it happen because they made it happen in 2014 and with the help of Eric Eric, Eric Zipkin, sorry, the chief pilot and uh, director of operations for the D-Day squadron, who flew Placid Lassie in 2014, um, they decided to start the uh, organizational machine to put things in motion. Uh, this week we are here in uh, Oxford, Connecticut, essentially for what we call the kickoff week. And essentially, uh, in our mind, this week will then be in a training, Crewing, uh, cruise uh, familiarization uh, a week so everyone really we know pretty much who some of the other crews are but they never really uh, 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 get together in one place so we've been doing a lot of flying a lot of formation flying we'll be trying to fly uh, a big formation of three airplanes across the ocean so it was very important for us to have a good solid week of flight training and training sorties to ensure a proper proper coordination with all the crews so we are here hosted by Atlantic Aviation and uh, Tradewind Aviation which is a local charter company and without their support we couldn't be doing anything because we are using their hangars we are using their maintenance facility we are using their offices uh, so this week it's really a good team team building and uh, that's really why we're here really getting getting to build up besides the training that's team spirits um, we have you know if you you might have seen pilots wearing a beautiful leather jacket uh, we have 60 jackets that uh, were provided by cockpit USA like a real World War II squadron we have these beautiful a2 jackets with a d-day squadron patch we have um, uh, a survival and uh, um, a gun, what we call a gumby suit training so you know we're bringing obviously um, gumby suits and we have rats so we're gonna go to a lake and you know practice you know for what we hope you know you know something that hopefully won't happen but you got to be ready for anything so that's what we're going to do uh, we're gonna do some you know emergency uh, response training in case you know something needs to uh, someone needs to be assisted and then tomorrow we're gonna fly a couple of times and again just training nothing specific we have that soul brother and pan am offering rides uh but essentially this is training uh fly fly just to really familiarize with e with each other saturday the big flight we're gonna go down the hudson river uh say say hello or say uh goodbye to the statue of liberty in a big formation then sunday it's a big day six o'clock briefing hopefully take off around 7 30 a.m eight o'clock depending on the weather and uh we're gonna go to goose bay first first stop and uh and then hopefully you know we'll continue across the pond now this event isn't isolated to the waterbury oxford airport in connecticut the d-day squadron made news across new england here at pratt whitney stadium in east hartford the aircraft did a flyover to pay tribute to the engines on the aircraft made of course by pratt and whitney 
So uh, one of the main, obviously, uh, uh, um, you know, things that we need to keep in mind is safety, logistics, and make sure that these airplanes will go across the pond safely. So it was really a massing undertaking to uh, plan this mission with 70 years old airplanes. Uh, every single airplane is operated and owned by individual organizations from the CAF, like D-Day Doll behind me, Fla Bob, and all other airplanes. And all these guys have experience flying uh, their air airplanes essentially uh, uh, within the United States, going to air shows, flying in. Um, something like this, when you fly 15 airplanes uh, together at the same time across the pond, I don't think has happened since World War II. So what we did really, we started breaking down all the different key elements to make it happen. Uh, we were lucky enough to get uh, good people on board in terms of volunteers. We have a well, we actually created this position of flight logistics coordinator and Kevin Riley, who is a, uh, a Jayhawk helicopter pilot for the Coast Guard, came on board. A uh, great guy with a lot of planning uh, uh, and experience, so he really helped out uh, map out the entire trip. Uh, companies, companies like Rocket Route are providing the flight planning and the, and, the, and the flight following. We have Flight Safety International that has provided a uh, online uh, training to uh, essentially fly the um, uh, oceanic uh, route. So we reached out to the aviation community, which came together and really helped us out, figure it out. You know, Jepson for the uh, the charts. Uh, Embry Riddle is provide is going to provide us daily weather briefing. So really, everyone came together because this is essentially not different from what happened 75 years ago. Obviously, with modern technology, but we have to plan for everything. So one of my jobs initially, before I really dove into the marketing and fundraising, was to contact all these airports that we are going to fly into and essentially what we are going to do we are going to fly the blue spruce route which is the original uh, route developed by the air transport command in world war ii to fly supplies people uh, soldiers all kind of stuff across europe and uh, airplanes as well so from here we're going to go to uh, goose bay so what did i do picked up the phone and called Goose Bay and told them what we were going to do. Same for Narsashwag in Greenland, Iceland and Presswick. And the most amazing thing that these guys, in every single FBO we are going to be uh, landing at, they couldn't be any more supportive of, of our mission. Uh, Presswick in Scotland was actually one of the main bases when they came down from the North Atlantic. They staged there for a few days and, and we are pretty much going to do the same, uh, same thing uh, uh, in a few days. Eric Bailey, the manager of the Presswick Glasgow Airport couldn't be any accommodating fuel discounts, basically fuel at cost, waiving all, all the fees, clean, cleaning up their uh, uh, aprons to allow to park the airplanes for several days. So we couldn't have done this without the support of the aviation community, the many volunteers that uh, are helping us today, for example, the Airedale guys that are marshalling the airplanes. Uh, we have volunteers across essentially the flight path at every single airport we are going to. We know that we're going to need help unloading some of the airplanes, uh, some of the uh, cargo inside the airplanes. For example, some of these airplanes have uh, auxiliary tanks, obviously, uh, just for safety but they're carrying them inside their fuselage. Uh, Plasti Lassi, and I think even Data all has auxiliary tanks. So when we get to press week, we don't really need and want to fly down to Cannes, Carpique for the event with tanks. So we have to take them off the airplanes. And again, how do we do this? It's just small crews. Volunteers come in in press week. They're waiting for us and they will be helping us. So it's really a big machine. Uh, great logistic, logistics planning has been done so far. And again, without the help, of people that like to support what we do, they understand the importance of, of remembering uh, D-Day and the people that made the ultimate sacrifice for, uh, uh, you know, for freedom, in the name of freedom. It's just fantastic. Everyone really uh, is on the same page. And I was brought up with this uh, 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 understanding and appreciation for these young American soldiers that came over, uh, liberated Europe, and as a consequence, you know, liberated Italy. I Italy was obviously liberated from the south going north, but, you know, it's part of a big push from the north and the south, a little, little um, liberated Europe. You know, we all remember D-Day, but the, the uh, uh, invasion of uh, southern Italy coming from North Africa really helped out 
you know, kind of squeezing the Germans. So I grew up with this appreciation for these young men that are 21 years old, 22 years old, you know, picked up their, uh, their uh, weapons and they went to free Europe.